So hello, hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, when we do those problems and we simplifying radicals and the answer has an absolute value or doesn't have, have, have an doesn't have an absolute value, why is that so? So first of all, I um, want to be clear. I'm assuming that you understand why these, these are equivalent, why this is the case, and then uh, slightly separately um, that I can write square root of 12 as uh, the product of square root of three times the square root of four. So if you're all set with that, we'll have at it. If you're not, you should go check that out before you finish, before you continue with this. So let's simplify this. I'm going to do it uh, quickly in um, probably more steps than most people would need to do, but uh, I'm just taking my time a little bit uh, to make sure that uh, we're good to go. And then I know that the fourth root of 81 happens to be 3. Uh, if you need to use your calculator, of course, go to town. And then I'm going to break this up into 2. 12, and then this is going to be the fourth root of r to the eighth. And then I'm going to use one of my rules, or as I prefer to say, shortcuts. This is y to the, I'm sorry, not the shortcut yet, uh, to the one fourth. And this is going to be r to the eighth raised to the one fourth. And I have three down here. And then this is going to be the shortcut or uh, rule, however you prefer. I'm going to multiply those two exponents. And this is going to be r eight over four. And this is all over 3 still. And so here's the here's my supposed answer. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so I get y cubed. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I get r squared. And then it's all over 3. And unfortunate thing is, this guy is incorrect. The correct answer is y cubed r squared over 3. But I have to have this the absolute value of y cubed. The big question is why. So this is my quickest way to explain to you, rewind, do whatever you need to do, uh, because all my videos are always too long. So on this side, I'm going to have y cubed. And on this side, I'm going to have the original expression, the fourth root of y squared. We'll look at the r, the r to the eighth uh, after this, um, because really you can treat them separately. So why is this the case? Well, if I put y equals negative 1 into this expression, out comes the fourth, well, I'll do the substitution, negative 1 to the 12th. And of course, since that's an even exponent, negative 1 multiplied 12 times, I'm going to get a positive 1, right? And then if I take the fourth root of 1, what number multiplied 4 times is 1? Well, 1. Over here, if I put y equals negative 1 into this, I get negative 1 cubed, which of course is negative 1. But what in the heck is going on here? Over here, if I put negative 1 in, I get 1. Over here, if I put negative 1 in, I get negative 1. That means that these guys are not equal. They're not equivalent. No matter what, if I put a number in, I should get the same result if they're, in fact, equivalent. They're not. How can we make them equivalent? Take the cube root, then this guy will always be positive. And that's the, the crux of this whole thing. Once I took the 12 and divided it by 4, I changed this even number, which never outputs a negative number, and turned it into an odd number, which preserves the negative number. It keeps it, keeps the negative sign. So when I changed the 12 into an odd number, that messed the whole thing up. So I have to do what I can to the final expression to make it the same. They have to be equivalent. So that's why I have to put the absolute value around it. Why not on the other, other guy, r to the 8th? Well, my original expression was r to the 8th, the fourth root of that. And then we're claiming that r squared is equivalent. Well, if I put a negative 1 in for r over here, I will get r squared equals 1. If I put a negative 1 in here, I also get r to the 8th, r uh, negative 1 to the 8th equals the fourth root of one, because if I multiply negative one eight times, I'll get a positive number. And of course, again, the fourth root of one is one. So the, the, the negative sign doesn't get carried through in either case. So that's why I don't have to use an absolute value on the r squared. So that's your easy test. Stick a negative one in there and see if they both come out to be positive one or negative one. If they do, you don't have to use absolute value. If they're different, figure out where you need to put the absolute value so that you get rid of the negative if the one side is positive. All right? Thank you much. Take care. Bye.